Hey folks, so welcome to another edition of one of my in-car videos and uh, I don't know if you can tell what I'm driving right now but it's actually a Proton. Check out those seats. Can you see them? I mean, those look like Martini Racing, don't they? <laughs> I like. Yes, yeah, so anyway, this is the 1.6 uh, Iris CVT. It's the uh, metallic color. It's top of the line. It's about 54,000 ringgit. And uh, it is the, it's a, it's it's the main competitor to, of course, the the recent Prodoa that was just launched. I mean, let's not let's not make any uh, excuses about it. The Prodoa might be the new one that just came out. It's just killing everybody. It's it's selling in vast numbers, some ridiculous thing like forty thousand bookings since since it was launched, and many many have uh, actually forgotten about this Iris. So Proton's come up with this uh, special edition model. Um, this one's got 8,000 kilometers on the on the clock already, so it, it's, been, it's been around a while. And uh, so far, first impressions are pretty good. I, I love these seats. Um, the one I'm sitting on is, looks the same as the one over here. And red stitching, semi-leather, fabric semi-leather, and uh, <laughs> these, these amazing Martini Racing uh, stripes, which I don't know if they actually realized it was the color combination for Martini Racing, but it is. It's, it's very much blue-red Martini Racing. All that's missing is the Martini Racing logo. So anyway, what's it like? So, so far it's been really good, um, very quiet, um, very nice. One thing I really don't like though is that when you drive off, like what I'm going to do now, this happens. Did you hear that? That was the, those were the door locks and they sound terrible. It's like something broke. And it's one of those things where you'd be like, hey, what just happened? And it can give you a little bit of a shock. One thing I do like though is the one touch indicators. Now, a lot of cars, in fact, all maybe, they would only flash three times when, you're, when you do the one-touch indicator thing. But this flashes five. And I have found that it is actually better to have five flashes than three, because three is not enough. You know, by the time you execute your maneuver, the flashes are finished. And if anybody didn't see those three, well then, hmm. So five, listen to it. There you go. Just nice. So, yeah, first impressions have been pretty good. The, okay, the CVT is a bit noisy, listen to it. So actually, Proton came up with a five-speed manual for this car. I think it would be perfect. Um, so we're on the highway now, and thus far I'm in eco mode. There are different modes that you can use, actually. So, let's see. Yeah, I'm still in eco, but never mind. I've turned, I've turned the in-cut entertainment off. One thing that's very impressive about this car though, is the headroom. Check this out. I'm six foot two. I'm sitting in my normal driving position. There's at least, at least eight inches, if not more, of headroom above my head. And that, that bodes very well for taller drivers. And this is my normal driving position. And there's a, okay, I'll be honest, there's not much leg room back here for, uh, for passengers. But I'm gonna drive this thing a little bit more and uh, get back to you really soon. So, see you later. So yeah, I forgot to mention just now that this thing comes with keyless entry and keyless go. Start stop button over here. And so you can just keep the little uh, key fob in, in your, in your um, pouch or purse. And it's keyless entry all the way, keyless entry and keyless go. Um, the one thing I don't quite like though is that the instrumentation cluster is a little bit small. I've just noticed this. Yeah, it's, it's pretty damn small. Um, and what's even smaller is the, the, the information system, the little information system that's right in the middle of the, uh, of the center of the instrumentation cluster in between the speedometer and the tachometer. Uh, it's tiny. Um, and this houses some pretty important information like uh, your trip meter for one. Uh, the trip, there are three trip meters. Here we go again with that one touch. Remember the one touch indicator thing I mentioned just now where it's five flashes instead of three? Well, you've got three trip meters in this car. Trip A, trip B, and trip C. Cool, okay. M uh, more is better, I guess. Uh, but you know what? It's the smaller things like the fuel consumption, sorry, not the fuel consumption, but the fuel gauge. The fuel gauge and the temperature gauge. Um, it's using the, the digital bars thingy. And uh, not only are they really small, but it looks really cheap. I'm sorry, but it does. Now, the outline of the, uh, of the um, 
info uh, the information system. And it looks pretty nice. It's, a, it's got a silver housing. It looks a little bit like a Bell & Ross watch or something a lot more expensive. A lot more expensive. Um, and it's also got the distance to empty, which now it's reading uh, 553 on a full tank. I'm not sure what size this full tank, uh, the tank is, but I will check that later. And you can probably read it in the uh, in the article that's forthcoming. So I'm back on the highway again. I'm doing I'm doing legal speed limits here. Um, that's the center of excellence we just passed. And uh, so far, it's been really quiet, except for tire noise and the whine of the CBT. Now the tire noise is getting a little bit ridiculous. Can you hear that? I'm gonna have to check what tires this car is, is using uh, because the tire noise right now is is pretty horrendous. And uh, but you know what? If that's the only if that's the only noise intrusion that's coming in right now, apart from the the whine of the CBT, then you know changing the tires might help. Absolutely help. So okay. Anyway, let's uh, let's see what else this car can do. Um, I'm gonna drive it a little bit more. I've got it for a week, so yeah, it's gonna be my daily runner. And no doubt, this car has been around for a while already. I mean, it came out in 2014. Uh, but hey, it's always good to revisit something that's tried and tested, isn't it? And thus far, one, two, three, four, five flashes again. And thus far, it's been pretty, pretty interesting. Quite livable, actually. Not too bad. I mean, Proton hasn't had the best of, of luck of late. Um, let's not even talk about management changes and stuff like that. Let's talk about the actual cars themselves. And recently they were hit again by, by um, vendors being asked to cut their costs. Now, of course, they will try to. Um, but what will happen is, unfortunately, the end consumer is the one that's going to suffer. Because as it is, we all know Proton components have never been really you know, the best that uh, they could be. I mean, don't get me wrong, I've had seven Protons in my life and by far the best was still the Satria GTI which came out in 99 um, but that was, I mean, that was, that was a one-off one -off special I mean, not a, really a car for the masses, was it? This car is and um, I'm not going to say cheap, I'm going to say inexpensive, relatively inexpensive and thus far, it looks like they've done a very decent job. Okay, there's still it's still plastic fantastic in here, I mean. You know, but um, plastic is light, it's durable, it works. So why not use it? The good thing is the power windows are really easy to operate. And so far, they've, they've been okay. Uh, no glitch. So I'm gonna drive this a bit more and let's see what happens. press the button properly. Okay, back again. Can you hear that? Uh, on hard acceleration, that CBT noise is pretty, pretty bad. Uh, so some feedback to Proton. You might want to do something about that somewhere around here, you know, maybe add a little bit more uh, sound editing or go visit KL Auto Foam or something and you know, get, get that foam put in because it's pretty loud. As usual, I'm driving without the uh, without the radio on. Sorry, why am I saying radio? There's, there's, there's interface actually. You can actually mirror your Android phone to the to the center display. So whatever you're using on it, Waze, Spotify, whatever, you know, you just put it up there. But I like to listen to the car. I like to listen to what the car is saying to me. Yes, cars actually do talk to you. If you, if you bother to listen, cars will actually talk to you. I'll digress a little bit and tell you what I mean about that. You have to be in tune with your car all the time. You know, if you feel, feel there's something not quite right, go get it checked out. Now, cars have unfortunately lost a lot of warning lights these days. There's not much to really tell you there's something going on. But I remember my Alfa Romeo, um, slew of warning lights. And the moment one comes on, you have to go and check it out because one always leads to another. Next thing you know, you've got three warning lights and then four and five. And if you don't go and get it checked out, the car is going to die. The car is telling you it's sick. So, you know, take me to a doctor, get me looked at, get me checked out, get me fixed. You keep driving like that. You know, it's like running a marathon with a full-blown flu and fever. You don't do that, do you? So why would you put your car through that? Um, so anyway, back, back to this car. 
not many warning lights. Yeah, there is a temperature gauge, but I, well, it's at half and that's where it's supposed to be. Um, how many of you actually even look at your temperature gauge anymore when you drive? I don't know. Nobody, I think. But anyway, back to the car itself. One thing really good about this car is the suspension. It's, it's handling the bumps and undulations really well. So you can tell this car has been made or created or built for Malaysian roads, which aren't the best in the world. Everybody knows there's no secret about that. You know, uh, our roads really are quite horrible. And there are certain stretches where you can actually break your rims, your alloy rims uh, on this road. Can, can you believe that? And in an age when, 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 when uh, the rims and wheels are getting bigger, and tires are getting lower in profile. I come from a time when 60 series was considered low profile. 60 series was considered low profile. And we've got what, 25 series now? Rubber band tires, what, this much rubber on the road and the rest, and after that it's just alloy rim. <sighs> Sorry, but that's just, jet, that's just trouble waiting to happen. This car though, it's handling the bumps really well. And a couple of spirited corners just now, not too bad. So there you go, handling wise, again, right in handling has, Proton has done a, a very good job on this. Um, NVH, not so great. I mean, it's possible, okay? I'm not gonna say for Proton, I mean, for any car, it's possible. There is still a little bit of wind noise intrusion, a little bit at higher speeds, but that's still not as bad as the CVT sound. The CVT wine is, is really quite, it's going to get to you. I mean, in the long run, I mean, if you're on a long distance drive, it's really going to get to you after a while. Um, so, yeah, Proton need to do something about that. I love the steering wheel and I love the steering feel, actually. It's leather wrapped with red stitching and the red stitching also matches the seats. Um, it, it just, the steering's very direct. This car feels pretty well sorted. And um, I'm actually looking forward to driving it for the whole week. I'm actually looking forward to driving it just for the hell of driving it and maybe hitting my one of my favorite uh, B roads. I'm not going to tell you where because uh, I don't want any unnecessary um, interruptions. That's a nice way of putting it. Interruptions while I drive. You know, this is work after all. I am doing work here. Uh, a lot of people say that. You know, oh, your your work is so great. You just get to drive all over the place. Well, yeah, it is. <laughs> It really is. I'm not going to say anything bad about it. It really is. I mean, I get paid to drive and I love to drive. So getting paid for what you love to do, that's not really work anymore, isn't it? It's the greatest challenge in your life to turn your hobby into your profession. And, uh, you know, you should really try doing that, uh, which is exactly what I've done and what I love to do. So, okay, I'm going to shut up now and let you listen to the car or maybe not. Can you feel that? That's a really bad stretch of road right there. And this car's handled it pretty well. So, so far, it's been really impressive. I just picked it up. Um, it's my first day with it. Aircon's wonderful. Oh, that's one thing. And that's one thing you have to remember, isn't it? Proton, the best thing about the car is the aircon. And this, 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 this is no, no different. Yeah, the, the aircon's actually freezing me a little bit. I'm gonna turn it down. And yeah, so climate control, um, pretty good. Again, again, yeah, they could do with less plastic. That's the door. That's the uh, dashboard. So yeah, a lot of plastic in here. Uh, the thing is though, the, they haven't made it look cheap. You know, the plastic is quite nice. There's even um, fox stitching. Uh, I, can't, I can't really think of any other way of putting it, but it looks, it actually looks like stitching on the dashboard and it's uh, just molded plastic really. So <laughs> it's kind of, okay, it's kind of cool. Um, but anyway, I'll get back to you more. Um, let me drive this thing a little bit more and we'll talk soon, yeah? Okay. Right, so I've actually gotten to where I'm going right now, and so I've stopped, and I wanted to show you this. Look at that. Okay, you got Isofix seats, which is which is great, but look at the design of those seats back there. And this was the red stitching I was telling you about, and that very obvious Martini racing color. And okay, so here's the uh, center display, which I was talking about just now. I mean. Look how tiny that is. That That's really small. I mean, even those dials are a little bit small, so I think the dimensions are a little bit off. And so you got trip A, trip B, and trip C. And you got your average fuel consumption, uh, distance to MT, and drive time. So yeah, I've, actually, you know, I reset this about halfway through, so I've been driving this car for about 20 minutes now, 
and of course I'm gonna drive it a little bit more that's your service interval right there and that's illumination so I'm keeping it on I'm just gonna keep it on trip A but this is the rest of it and as you can see I've got navigation uh, this is also a mirror link whereby you can mate your your smartphone uh, Android smartphone with it uh, to to mirror the yes I want to exit no actually better not so okay so that's that's it and um, until until we drive it a little bit more so you got your USBs here Ooh, that's difficult oh this way sorry gosh I almost broke that hmm okay your 12 volt socket and another USB port which is great total of three now I get I'm counting probably get a few hiding somewhere but uh, by and large it's been it's been quite decent so far it's been quite impressive so far and uh, yeah okay so yeah I'm gonna drive it a little bit more and uh, I'll get back to you soon okay laters